Okay, welcome to lab 12, configuring a network policy server. This is found in the Microsoft Official Academic Course, Administering Windows Server 2012 R2 in preparation for exam 70-411. We are going to be reviewing exercise 12.1 during this video, installing and configuring the network policy server. which is um, the estimated completion time for this exercise is 15 minutes. So with that, let's get started. In this exercise, you install and configure Microsoft's RADIUS server, known as a network policy server. The mindset behind this is the network policy server is used as Microsoft RADIUS server. It provides centralized authentication for RADIUS clients, such as VPN servers and wireless access points. It also provides accounting information to log files on the local hard disk or in a Microsoft SQL Server database for those clients. Again, the estimated completion time for this exercise is 15 minutes, so let's get started. So we are going to go into the RWDC, and again, I am logged in as the um, administ Contoso Administrator. And we want to go into Manage, Add Roles and Features, and then next, and, and then next, and then next, and then we want to select network, network and pol network policy and access servers. Sorry, access servers. Add features, and then we're going to go ahead and click on next. And next, 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 and then install. And I'll go ahead and pause the video while we wait for this to install. Okay, so installation succeeded on rwdc01.contosa.com. We'll go ahead and click on close. And now we're going to look at adding a remote radius server group. So now we're going to go into tools. Network policy server, and then minimize this, maximize this, and we're going to expand the network policy server console to fill the entire screen, which I did that. In the NPS local tree, which is this, we're going to double click radius and then right click remote radius. So left click, right click. And we're going to choose new. And here we're going to type group name Try this again. I'm sorry, I'm on the wrong one. I need to go to remote. Right click, new. Here it is, group name. We want to type in R-A-D-I-U-S servers and then click on add. Now we're going to type in the IP address, 192.168.1.50. 
under authentication accounting, we want to click Actually, this brings us to question one. What is the default authentication port used with Radius servers? That's going to be 1812. Okay, if you haven't done so already, this would be where you take your next screenshot. We'll go ahead and click on OK. And then OK. Brings us to the next question. What is the default weight assigned to the new Radius server? And that answer is 50. All right, now we're going to click on OK. And that is the end of this exercise. That was relatively quick. So let's take a look to you and get to the next one, which is 12.2, configuring NPS <coughs> for radius server for VPN connections. All right, during this exercise, you configure NPS to support VPN connections. Radius clients, also referred to access, as access servers, are servers such as servers running RS and devices such as wireless access points and 802.1x switch that forward Radius requests to a Radius server. An access client is a computer or device that contains or connects to a Radius client, which requires authentication and authorization to connect. The estimated time to complete this exercise is approximately 10 minutes. So, we are already on our RWDC01, and we're already in our network policy server. So, we're going to click on the NPS, which is right here. And we want to click the down arrow under standard configuration. And select radius server for dial up or VPN connections. We're going to click on configure VPN or, or dial up. <clears throat> on the select dial up or virtual private network connection, we're going to type, we're going to select virtual private network or VPN, and then click on next. On the specified dial up or VPN server page, we're going to click on add. And here we're going to type in server01 in the friendly name text box and then in the IP address we're going to type in 192.168.1.60 and then at the bottom of the dialog box on the shared secret we're going to type in the password that we've been using, PA dollar sign dollar sign W0RD, and confirm it. This is the same password we've been using throughout. I'm going to click on OK. Here we're going to click on Next. And now we're going to answer the following question. By default, what was the authentication method selected? The answer is the MS chapter V2. Okay. And then here. Oh, if you're following along in your lab manual, this would be where you take your next screenshot. Once you do, we'll go ahead and click on next. And then answer the next question. What happens if you do? Do not define a user group. 
And the answer to that is the policy will apply to all users. Okay, on the specify IP filters page, next, 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 here we're going to type in contoso.com, click on next, and then finish. And we're going to expand the policies node and then click on connection request policies. And you would take it if you're following along in your lab manual, this is where you would take your next screenshot. And that is the end of this exercise. And it says we're only at about 11 minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and continue to exercise 12.3, which is managing radius templates. <coughs> During this exercise, you use radius templates to simplify the deployment of radius in the future. The radius templates simplify the configuration of radius servers by creating radius configuration elements such as IP filters or shared secrets and reuse them to local NPS servers. The templates can also be exported to a file and then imported into another NPS server. I'm going to go ahead and jump right into this next question. During the lab exercises, you have been using the PA dollar sign dollar sign W0RD for domain admins and user logins. In reality, should you use the same password for templates? If you are or are not, explain why. And the answer to this, you should use a different password. In this particular case, the password would only be used for the NPS template and it should not be used for anything else. Oh, the estimated completion time for this exercise is 10 minutes. So let's get started. We are on RWDC01, logged in as Contoso slash administrator. We're still on the network policy server. So we're going to double click templates, ma templates management. Now we're going to right click shared secrets left click, right click, and then we're going to choose new, and we're going to type shared secret template, and then put in our password. And then OK. Under Radius Clients and Servers, which is right here, we want to click on Radius Clients and we want to double click Server 01. Here we have two of them. So we'll go ahead and open it up. The dialog box opens. In the shared secret section in the drop down arrow list, we're going to select shared secret template. And then click on OK. And then we're going to right click the templates management. And choose export templates to a file. And then here we're going to type in templates and then click on save. Right click templates management again and choose import templates from a file. And we're going to select the templates. right here. Click on open and 
this is the end of this exercise. And we're only about 15 minutes in, and the next exercise is only about five minutes, so we're going to jump right to it. And that's actually the last, the last exercise for this lab. So let's take a look at exercise 12.4, configuring radius accounting. Although radius is used for central authentication, it can also be used for accounting. During this exercise, you configure radius accounting. The mindset behind this is the two uses of radius accounting are to track network usage for auditing and billing purposes. And again, the estimated time for completion of this exercise is five minutes. Okay, so we are already on the RWDC01 inside the Network Policy Server console. On the NPS local tree, we're going to click on accounting, which is right here. In the accounting section, we want to click on configure accounting. And then we're going to click on next. We're going to click log to a text file. Click on next. And then click on next. And that takes us to our next question, where are the logs stored? And they're stored under the Windows System 32 log files. Okay, from here, if you're following along your lab manual, you would take your next screenshot. We'll click on Next. And then click on Close. And this is the end of this exercise and the end of this lab and the end of this video.